Oh, here we go. Come on, T. Hey! Oh, wow. My goodness. Thank you, Surfshark, for sponsoring this video. Because it rained pretty much all of yesterday, it's like the perfect consistency of mud here that just gets stuck in our mud guards. It's just all of it is like caked. <laughs> anyway, got some magic sticks. And we're going to clear it out. Hi there, and welcome back to our tandem bicycle tour across Georgia. You join us in the region of Imereti on one of the most challenging tracks we've tackled so far. Yeah, we've got to be careful of those wheels slipping. The constant stopping to clear mud guards. Crap out of the wheel. Navigating through murky puddles of unknown depths. Well done! And just the sheer amount of climbing on this route, all made for some gruelingly slow progress. The whole day had proved to be a bit of a slog, and come evening, I shall have began to feel quite unwell. Every time we would go up hills, uh, my stomach started like aching, and I thought maybe I ate and now have to pedal very hard. Maybe it's just really uh, pressuring my intestines or something. We just, we just need to get to civilization. Yeah. And we'll find somewhere to sort you out. You're doing very well. Yeah. We're almost over the top of this path. Good. It's just an insane amount of climbing today on non-ideal surfaces. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll get you. We'll get you there. Deciding it wouldn't be a smart idea to camp that night, we pushed on to the town of Tikibuli, where we checked into an old hotel. How are you, Ashola Yeah. I'm good. Yes, I'm feeling much better. Ate some food, got some energy, and can be riding again tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, but today I still want to take uh, time just to relax. Um, I think it was a good stop. Yeah. Walking around the streets of Tikibuli, we ended up wandering into the local theatre. This is the uh, clothing rack, so if you come to your performance room, we'll give you a coat just and through there. <laughs> yeah, you get a little token or something, yeah. right? Unfortunately, the main stage area was closed. Locked in. But the surrounding rooms were still well worth checking out. Wow. wow. Impressive windows. We can be real soon, mate. We can, we can wave to the uh, people of Tikibuli. <laughs> so, uh, oh. There you are. No. <laughs> Wait. Thankfully, the next morning, Ashola's stomach pain had completely subsided, and she woke up re-energized and raring to get pedaling once again. Today's challenge is to get up there, which is a, I don't know, it's about a mile of climbing, something like that, up that path. But before we tackle the hill climb, first a quick word from this video's sponsor. Surfshark is a VPN app and browser extension that enables you to send your internet traffic through a different country. This enables you to hide your IP address to help keep your personal details safe. Now, the other day I was very excited to sit down and watch Weirdo Yankovic's new film starring Daniel Radcliffe, which I'd heard was available to watch for free on the Roku channel. However, unfortunately, I soon found out it was only available to people living within the United States. But this is precisely the kind of problem Surfshark can deal with, because simply by opening the app and selecting a server in the States, I could now reload the page and gain access to the film, which was pretty great by the way. They're also the only commercial VPN to have servers in over 100 different countries. So, if you think you could benefit from using a VPN, please consider Surfshark. And by using my code EDPRATT, you'll receive 85% off, plus three extra months for free. So you receive a great deal, 
and you support this channel. Thank you, Surfshark. Now back to the hill climb. Yeah, reckon it'll take us a few hours, but we're feeling optimistic, aren't we? Yeah, I, I saw the road and I was like, oh yeah, that's gonna be a challenge, but uh, I think we can do it today. I've got a strong, a strong stoker, <laughs> so I think we'll be just fine. <laughs> Still gonna hurt though, isn't it? Uh, yes. What else are we doing today, eh? <laughs> Climbing a mountain, that's it. That's all we have to do. I think that's the top. <laughs> that's the, this is the top. Oh, well done. Well done. Oh, I'm being smushed. Smushing me. It's only like 4.30, but we're considering camping somewhere here by the lake because it's just so pretty and it's quite nice to set up the tent before it actually gets like dark and the sun sets. Now we'd seen some stunning lakes during our time cycling across Georgia, but hands down Showery Reservoir took the biscuit for the prettiest. Guess that's where we're sleeping tonight then. Tents up, got lovely view, the mountains over there. The sun has left us, unfortunately, but it will return in the morning and I'm, I'm, I'm expecting just an amazing sunrise. You happy? Yeah, I'm looking forward to see the mountains in the morning, actually. Be cool, it's it? gonna be quite beautiful. It smells incredible. Some fried onions, mascarades, it's just great, isn't it? It's slowly becoming our kind of standard meal, isn't it? Yeah. Onions and carrots and pasta. This was certainly one of the more picturesque wild camps we'd found on this trip. And as the light slowly faded on the snow-capped Caucasus Mountains to the north, we looked forward to the views that next morning might bring. It's not, it's not quite the uh, the sunrise I was expecting, but it's still pretty. <laughs> yeah. Should What's go... the plan for today then? Well, I don't know. Ride, okay. cycle. Should we cycle? Should we go on a little little cycle ride? <laughs> We had an extremely chilled start to the day, enjoying the warmth that the sun brought with it 
after what had been quite a cold night. Lots of raisins, cinnamon, chocolate, and um, mm. muesli. Cool. <laughs> Very delicious, actually. I think today, yeah, today is going to be a bit flatter, a bit more downhill. <laughs> Yesterday's pass was fun, but it was tough going. It's nice that we have to do another one today. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see what we see. We'll ride a little bit and then hopefully find somewhere else beautiful to camp. Oh yeah, <laughs> feel the wind. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Oh, my eyes are watering. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> so wet. Okay. <laughs> oh, my. Watch out the bumps. I see him. Sneak past. Hey, cow. Yeah, watch out the cow. Cow. Oh yeah. wow, that's cold. This is cold. You just want like a long downhill, do you? That was <laughs> like pretty a long. straight one, straight one. Oh, I don't know, I think we pick up far too much speed with that. It's true. At least the the bends can't well the bends just keep it fun, don't they? They just they do, they, they keep do. it interesting. Something else that was gonna keep this ride interesting was coming up just around the next corner. Okay. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Glad to you <laughs> hey! Ready? Oh, 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 the most aggressive ones are the ones that belong to people. They're the guard dogs, aren't they? Yeah. It's their job. There are types. Some is just bark, you know? They just bark and they're not going to do anything. Second one is just, they run. <laughs> <laughs> they run up to you so close. I have this yeah. rattle, <laughs> rattle thing, which actually helps a little bit. It's worked, doesn't it? Yeah. I yeah. just imitate it. Imitate like I'm throwing something, or I have a water spray, <laughs> yeah. which also like helps a little bit. I spray their faces. Yeah, pretending to throw stuff does tend to work quite well. From my experience, just stopping, just stopping when you're riding seems to deter them as well. They yeah. just like to chase stuff and they like the movement of the pedals as well. Okay, uh -huh. next climb. And next little downhill. You ready? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay. This is better. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Oh my. You don't know what it feels like sitting on the back of a tandem right now. <laughs> That's like your personal roller coaster. Wow, wind is so strong, it's so hard to breathe. It's just blocking all my nostrils. <laughs> Shite. Something else, isn't it? Let's slow it down for this oh. one. <laughs> oh, that was unbelievable. Oh, okay, 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 <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, okay. There you are. Wow, that's so pretty, isn't it? Look at that town. It is so pretty. Right, let's just have a little stop here. We can yeah. just park him up against this barrier. Oh. Wow. It's Abra Lauri. Yeah. Oh, that was crazy. Okay. Did you enjoy that? I did, I did, but I'm freezing right now because it was so cold and all my nostrils were like blocked with the wind. Wow. Wow, that's pretty.
We didn't spend all that much time in Ambrella Ori. Enough just to refill the petrol bottle. So, super. And to stop at a small shop to stock up on snacks. What do you get? Um, I got some juice mm -hmm. for lunch today. I got chocolates for Ooh. Ed. <laughs> I got some savory snacks. And so I got this one, it's in the glass, but I have a spare bottle, so I'll put some the gherkins, the gherkins yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, got some a wine. Believe it or not, from here, we only had about 200 miles to go until the end point of our tour. Our plan from Ambrolauri was to continue on through the region of Ratcha to Tuzgeri. And from there, begin making our way south once again through Kutaisi and ultimately finish in about a week's time at the Black Sea. That was the plan at least. For now though, lunch. <laughs> Back up. My lover. <laughs> Mad lover, thank you. <laughs> Gotta scare them away. <laughs> the road we'd recently connected with hugged the path of the beautiful Rioni River. Now, we didn't know it then, eating our lunch and fending off cows, but the remainder of the day following this river would bring with it some seriously spectacular rising. section of the gorge was lots of caves uh, and dripping water <laughs> so at the moment we are here and we are planning to get to here and maybe yeah find a camping spot somewhere perhaps our ooh, okay. perhaps our camping spot somewhere there perhaps yeah, my concern is that we're going to find somewhere that's a bit boggy. But I suspect down there could be all right. I'm sort of down this track down there. Mm. Yeah, no, I don't think that place works. There's too many trucks coming and going. Like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Yeah. To be honest, even if there wasn't any trucks, the ground down there was still far too saturated. So we rode on to the next village. Good morning and welcome to our random, random camping place just outside the church and near someone's garden. We were told we could sleep here, so we did. <laughs> anyway, packing up and we'll head on and tackle some nasty switchbacks. <laughs> yeah. The climb we faced that morning wasn't huge, but with 1500 feet of ascent over the next five miles, it was still very much enough to warm up our legs and get our hearts pumping. Halfway up, rain clouds moved in, so we decided to take a break. 
we found this kind of awning underneath this shop, which we're just hiding under for a few minutes. Hopefully the rain stops, we will see. It feels like it might. The forecast says that it will, but who knows? Mountain weather is weird, isn't it? But your friend, he seems a bit out of it, to be honest. He seems a bit, um, I don't know, I don't know if he's just cold or if he's tired, but he's like falling asleep standing up. Hey, dude. Gosh. The space under the bench, you can come. Crowning the top of the pass, we realised that this would most likely be the last major climb that we'd face on the trip. From here, we'll be dropping south, away from the Caucasus Mountains, and towards much flatter terrain. And while it was slightly sad that we'd soon be leaving these beautiful mountains, it was also exciting knowing that we'd almost made it across the country and completed our goal. As we were pretty set for supplies, we cruised straight through to Zgeri without stopping, keen to push past the town and find somewhere suitable to camp. You're definitely going to wake up to a gorgeous view. Cool. Oh man, this is a lovely place. Look at this. A little fire over there, a tent just right there. Gorgeous view. Okie dokie. Gonna go search for some firewood. So we're gonna have a little campfire tonight. Woohoo! We haven't stopped this early ever yet, I don't think. So it's nice. Yeah, nice to have the time to uh, search around and make a fire. Oh, and it's, and it's so dry as well. Look at that. Great. I think first order of business is to make the fire pit smaller because that is just humongous. Nice. Yeah, no, but we have we have onions and we have carrots cool. and we have pasta and we have tomato ketchup. I'm excited for food. It's a meal. It's a meal. But we can we can let it get a bit dark first. We can yeah. get this fire going. Yeah. Look at all this wood. <laughs> excited. Oh, it's very excited. <laughs> It's nice on your fire, but it's it's worth doing it though. Oh, when you're two or three or four or many. No, it's kind of the same food we've been having, but it's, mm. um, it's you can't beat it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was a good night. If not a little bit windy, the tent was getting battered around at about sort of two, three o'clock in the morning, and the wind just hasn't stopped since then. Um, and it's hitting the side of the tent, which wasn't all that reassuring because it was caving in just slightly. But it's a strong tent; it survives. Uh, pack up shortly, and we will make our way to a place called Kutaisi. It's about 25 miles away. A couple more climbs, but nothing serious. We'll make it and we plan to stay a few days in the city. We'll rest up and uh, see what there is to see there.
We left camp without having had breakfast, deciding to push on and eat at the next town just 10 miles away. The headwind had been something else all morning, and we arrived at a restaurant tired and incredibly eager for food. And it seemed we weren't alone. <laughs> Food was the standard affair of fried potatoes, heaps of tomato and cucumber salad, and lobiani, our favourite bean-filled pastry. Rested and refuelled, we jumped back on the tandem, keen to arrive in Kutaisi that afternoon. There's nothing obvious sticking out of the tire. This will just take it off and replace the tube. Yeah. Weird one. We discovered that the flat was due to a small tear on the rim side of the tube. A bit odd considering there was nothing obvious causing the pinch, but we got the tube swapped out anyway and just crossed our fingers that this fix would hold. It's always frustrating to stop for things like this. But at the end of the day, punctures are just part of travelling by bike. And while it's never convenient, at least this day was warm and dry, and we weren't on any major time crunch to get anywhere. All right, should we get the stuff back on and uh, <laughs> and start moving again? Yeah. Yeah, we were just like, ah, just have a bit of food, five miles, we'll be there. And yeah, always, always little issues, stuff you don't expect. Well, we got there, yeah. I think. We'll get the stuff back on and hopefully the wheel doesn't go like <laughs> In all honesty, we've been incredibly lucky so far, experiencing next to no mechanical failures during our entire time in Georgia. And as we pedaled off towards the Black Sea, we were feeling optimistic that this luck would continue for the remainder of the trip. Because seriously, just how many more punctures could the bike realistically suffer in the last 100 miles. Thank you very much for watching, and we hope to see you next time for the final instalment of our tandem tour across Georgia. See ya. If you'd like to watch the next episode right now, you can for as little as $2 on Patreon. And if you're feeling really impatient, you can head over to Vimeo and binge this entire series from start to finish over there. Your support is greatly appreciated.